Facility location is the process of determining geographic sites for a firm's operations, which could include a manufacturing plant, a distribution center, and a customer service center. Facility location is the right location for the manufacturing facility. It will have sufficient access to the customer, workers, and transportation. A manufacturing unit is the place where all inputs such as raw materials, equipment, skilled laborers, come together and manufacture product for customers. The location of the facility plays a vital role in the success of logistic networks. The main focus of logistics is to reduce costs, improve efficiency as well as customer service. Successful facility location decisions may lead to drastic cost reduction as well as an improvement in the customer service levels. Facility location may be defined as a place where the facility will be set up for producing goods or services. A facility should ideally be located at a place where raw materials are available. This is necessary for maintaining continuity in the production process. While selecting a facility location, an organization should consider various factors that may have significant impact on its performance. So, facility location is the process of identifying the best geographic location for the service or production facilities of the firm. So, facilities include manufacturing and assembly centers, warehouses, distribution centers, transshipment points, retail outlets, and dump sites. Facility location find the best geographic location for the different elements in the supply chain. Right location provides adequate access to customers, suppliers, skilled laborers. And right location ensures success of the organization in current global environment. Dominant factors in manufacturing. Dominant factors are those derived from competitive priorities, cost, quality, time, and flexibility, and have a particularly strong impact on sales or cost. Secondary factors also are important, but management may downplay or even ignore some of them if other factors are more important. The following seven groups of factors dominate the decision firms, including BMW, make about the location of new manufacturing plants or distribution centers. Often, there is a trade-off among factors. Number one is the favorable labor climate. A favorable labor climate may well be the most important factor for labor-intensive firms in industries such as textiles, furniture, and consumer electronic. Labor-intensive means that it includes restaurants, hotels, agriculture, and mining. Less developed economies as a whole tend to be more labor-intensive. This situation is rather common because low income means that the, comp that the economy or business cannot afford to invest in expensive capital. Proximity to markets the, te the term market refers to a business, customers, and consumers. For businesses such as takeaways, corner shops, clothes shops, pop-up food businesses, and hairdressers, being close to their market is extremely important. If these businesses were not close to their market, they would miss out on sales as they would not be easily accessible to their target market. For example, major retailers show proximity ads to potential consumers who are near their premises. If you've ever seen an ad for a discount queue, just as you happen to walk by Macy, then that's proximity-based marketing. Number three, impact on environment. As the focus on sustainability has increased, firms are looking to recognize the impact of the location decisions on the environment. Along with minimizing the carbon footprint of the new facility and its accompanying facilities in the supply chain, Consideration must also be given to reducing overall energy costs. Quality of life Good schools, recreational facilities, cultural events, and an attractive lifestyle contribute to quality of life. Number 5. Proximity to suppliers and resources 
Films dependent on inputs of bulky, perishable, or heavy raw materials emphasized proximity to their suppliers and resources. So, number five po, dapat nakadepende po yung inputs of bulky, yung perishable or heavy raw materials nila sa pinakamalapit na suppliers at malapit na pwede nilang pagkunan ng mga raw materials. And dapat po maka-encourage din po ang ibang firms na, na mag-locate sa ibang facilities na may malapit na suppliers. Number six, Proximity to the parent's company facilities. In many companies, plants supply parts to other facilities or re rely on other facilities for management and staff support. Dapat po, hindi lang nakadepende sa isang company facilities yung, yung isang company, kundi dapat po makonsider din po or mak makarelay sila sa ibang facilities na meron ang company nila. Para makakuha po sila ng management and staff support. Number 7. Utilities, taxes, and real estate costs. Other location decision factors include utility costs, local and state taxes, financing incentives offered by local or state governments, relocation costs, and land costs. Pag po, sa so number 7 po, dapat hindi lang isang factor yung nakikita, kundi dapat makonsider din po yung ibang um, factor decisions, katulad na lang po nung pagbabayad ng buwis, yung pagpapakabit ng telephone, ng electricity, ng water, at yung tamang pagbayad po ng financing incentives at pagrerolocate po ng isang lugar. Number 8. Other factors. Still other secondary factors may need to be considered, including room for expansion, construction, cost accessibility to multiple modes of transportation, the cost of sh shuffling people and materials between plants, insurance, cost competition, competition from other fears for workforce and local ordinance, community attitudes, and uh, many others. So, number 8 po, other factors. Dapat hindi lang po yung um, yung field, na, yung trabaho nila ang nakikita, kundi dapat po ma-include din po doon yung isang uh, yung room for expansion, yung mga gastos yan sa pagko-construction or pagre-renovate po ng isang company yung multiple modes of transportation po nila kasi hindi naman po lagi isang, uh, hindi lang po isang lugar yung pinupuntahan ng isang company and yung pagpapalit-palit po ng raw materials nila. Dominant factors in services The factors considered for manufacturers are also applied to service providers. With one important addition, the impact of location on sales and customer satisfaction. Customers usually look about how a service facility is, particularly if the process requires considerable customer's contact. Proximity to customers. Location is the key factor in determining how conveniently customer can carry on business with the firm. For example, few people would like to go to remotely located dry cleaner or supermarket. If another is more convenient, thus the influence of location and revenue spread to be the dominant factors. Transportation costs and proximity to markets. For warehouse and distribution operations, transportation costs and proximity to markets and are extremely important. With a warehouse nearby, many firms can hold inventory closer to the customer, thus reducing delivery time and promoting sales. Location of competitors. One completion related to estimating the sales potential of different locations is the impact of competitors. Management must not only consider the current location of competitors, 
but uh, but also try to anticipate their location to the firm's new location. Site-specific factors. Retailers also must consider the level of retail activity, residential density, traffic flow, traffic flow, and site visibility. Retail activity in the area is important as shoppers often decide on impulse to go shopping or to eat in a restaurant. Traffic flows and visibility important because businesses, customers arrive in cars. A geographical information system or GIS is a system of computer software, hardware, and data that the firm's personnel can use to manipulate, analyze, and present information relevant to a location decision. Also, GIS is computer system for capturing, storing, checking, and displaying data related to the position on Earth's surface. GIS can show many different kinds of data, such as streets, buildings, and vegetation. Geographic information system is also a technological field that incorporates geographical features with tabular data in order to map, analyze, and assess real-world problems. Comparing several sites A systematic selection process begins after perception or evidence indicates that opening a retail outlet, warehouse, office, or plant in a new location will improve performance. The process of selecting a new facility location involves a series of steps. First is to identify the important location factors, then categorize them as dominant or secondary. Several factors that influence location positioning include the location of raw materials, proximity to the market, climate, and culture. Models for evaluating whether a location is the best for an organization consists of cost-profit analysis for locations, the center of gravity model, the transportation model, and factor rating. Second is to consider alternative regions. Then narrow the choices to alternative communities and finally to specific sites. To consider alternative regions and then state their pros and cons on that location. Third is collect data on the alternatives from location, consultants, state development agency, city and country planning departments, chambers of commerce, land developers, electric power companies, bank, and on-site visits. Some of this data information may also be contained inside the GIS. After looking at the pros and cons of different country, and deciding on a country, then decision makers will identify a region within the country. When identifying a region, decision makers must take the four major factors. Fourth is to analyze the data collected, beginning with the quantitative factors. Factors that can be measured in dollars, such as annual transportation costs or taxes. The quantitative factors can also be measured in terms other than dollars, such as driving time and miles. Determine the fixed and variable costs associated with each location alternative. Then determine which location will have the lowest total cost for the expected level of output. And determine which location will have the highest profit. Then fifth. Bring the qualitative factors pertaining to each site into the evaluation. A qualitative factor is one that cannot be evaluated in dollar terms, such as community, attitudes, environmental factors, or quality of life. To merge quantitative and qualitative factors, some managers review the expected performance of each factor, while others assign each factor a weight of relative importance and calculate a weighted score for each site using a preference matrix. The main factors that affect location decision include regional factors, community consideration, and site-related factors. Community factors consist of quality of life, services, 
attitudes, taxes, environmental regulation, utilities, and development support. The main consideration choosing a site are land, transportation, zoning, and many others. When identifying a site, it is important to consider to see if the company plans on growing at this location. If so, the firm must consider whether or not location is suitable for expansion. When the facility is part of a firm's larger network of facilities, we assume that there is no interdependence. So, the process of selecting a new facility location involves a series of steps. First is identify the important location factors, then categorize them as dominant or secondary. Then the second step is to consider alternative regions, narrow the choices to alternativity and finally to the specific sites. Then the third step is to collect data on the alternatives. Then the fourth step, analyze the data collected beginning with the quantitative factors. Then the last step is to bring the qualitative factor to the evaluation the site with the highest weighted score is the best. Applying the low distance method. The low distance method is a mathematical model used to evaluate locations based on proximity factors. As the name suggests, this method that is in a distance between the existing locations or the market or it could be the supply center or it could be the service center for the customer with the upcoming or the prospective location. The objective is to select a location that minimizes the sum of the loads multiplied by the distance the load travels. The loads could be the number of people who have to move and come into or out of the service centers or it could be the number of products that is the goods moving in or out of the facility. Load may be shipments from suppliers, shipments between plants or to customers, or it may be customers or employees traveling to and from the facility. The grid positions of various locations are taken and their distance from the prospective location is measured. To take position of the existing centers and take into consideration that all the prospective locations and measure is the distance between and this is done by using of the map of the location of the entire region and that is placed on using a graphical sheet. The firm seeks to minimize its low distance score generally by choosing a location that ensures loads go short distances. To calculate the LD score for any potential location, we use the actual distance between any two points using a GIS system and simply multiply the loads flowing to and from the facility by the distances traveled, travel time, actual miles, or rectilinear distances when using a grid approach or all appropriate measures for distance. The distance between two points is a expressed by assigning the points to grid coordinates on a map an alternative approach is to use time rather than distance so here is the formula in getting the low distance map to solve so first we find the relative grid position of all the existing as well as the prospective locations and you know how we do this we take the map of the region and place it on a graphical sheet by way of that we get the grid position of all the existing as well as the prospective locations. We note down the values of the x and the y coordinates of all the locations. Next, find the load at each location. As I said, the load could be the number of people served or the amount of goods which is to be transported. These goods could be the raw material from the supply centers or it could be the finished goods sent to the market. Next, we measure the distance of the prospective locations from each of the existing locations. Measuring of distance, again, what could be the way by which we could measure the distance? Well, the distance could be the actual distance, it could be the Euclidean distance or the rectilinear distance. Okay. Let's understand this by way of the graph here. Let's say we have two locations, say A and B, denoted by these two points. Okay, The x-coordinate of A here is given by xA and the y-coordinate of A is given by yA. 
So this point is x a comma y a. We could note it down, and then here it could be the x coordinate is x b and y coordinate is y b. So we have x a y a comma x b y b as the coordinate values of both these locations a and b. Fine. Now the distance. Between these two points A and B is denoted by d a b, and the distance could be the actual distance. The actual distance would be the distance of mo uh, motion through roads and terrains as the way is. Okay, it may have curves, it may have turnings. It would be the actual distance. If you have the actual distance between both the points, that in fact would be most suitable and the best one. Okay, but in case we do not have then we are we can either measure the rectilinear distance or the euclidean distance and these are given by the euclidean distance is given by the root of xa minus xb square plus ya minus yb square and this is actually the straight line estimate of the distance so when you measure the distance in a straight line from a to b something like this and this is possible you know when you have say for example uh, a straight line motion which could be within a region by uh, say conveyor belts or any other suitable pipelines or something like that okay so this could be the act this is the actual distance given in the straight line when we go to the rectilinear distance the rectilinear distance allows only horizontal or the vertical movement and the value of the distance dab is given by the mod of the difference of xa and xb plus the mod of the difference of ya and yb that is the we'll take the positive values of the difference of x coordinate of both the locations and add it to the positive value of the y coordinate of both the locations okay and this will actually give us the distance from a to b in this manner you know first you move in the vertical direction and then in the horizontal direction this way okay so we have the distance taken in these two manners fine hope the steps are clear up to now then we find the product of the load and the distance from each centers okay so we have got the distance dab and then we find the product of this distance with the load moving to that center to that facility okay finally we find the sum of the products for each of these locations so for each of the prospective locations the locations where we are planning to locate our facility we'll find the sum of the products of all that we have found in the previous step and finally the smallest value of the sum would be selected as the most suitable one most suitable location okay let me uh, give you the steps once again okay so first we find the relative grid position of all the existing and the prospective locations let's say we have okay as a and b these are uh, two prospective locations two or uh, alternative sides out of which we will have to select one okay let me write coordinate values of both these locations so here let's say it is 2 comma 2 and B let's say it is 6 comma 6 okay now you have 1 2 say 3 4 5 and 6 the same way in the y-axis you have X and Y now let's say that there are two uh, centers from where the supply is done one is say located here at say let me call this as the first supply center say s1 and the value here is say 5 comma 2 okay similarly let's say we have another supply center which is at say here let me call this as s2 and the values here let me say are 3 comma 5 okay so now we have two supply centers and two prospective locations 
So the first step is to place the say map of this region. Let's say that this is the map, okay? And we have placed this on a graph and we have got the relative position of all of these. Next, we need to find the distance. Now again the question is which way, which distance should we measure? Should it be the rectilinear distance or the Euclidean distance? Well, let's find both of these because we are practicing and so let's first take the uh, say rectilinear distance. Rectilinear distance. So when we take the rectilinear distance here, say rectilinear distance, the formula is given by say DAB is equal to x a minus x b plus y a minus y b the mod values of these so and that will be the straight line distance uh, sorry uh, the distance in the vertical and horizontal so let's find the distance between a and uh, say let's supply center 2 so that will be So it will be the movement from here to here and then from here to here. All right. So A S2. Let me write for A S2. A S2 will be equal to, we'll take first the difference between the X A and X B. This is A and this is B for in our case. So it will be 2 comma 3. So it will be 2 minus 3 the mod plus the value of Y would be 2 minus 5 the mod of 2 minus 5 2 minus 3 is 1 of course because we are going to take the mod value the positive sign so it will be 1 plus 2 minus 5 is 3 so 3 plus 1 is 4 so the value here is 4 in the same way if we find from a to s1 the distance from a s1 would be 2 minus 5 plus 2 minus 2 and 2 minus 5 is 3 whereas 2 minus 2 is 0 so it will be 3 okay now what about the loads let's assume that both of these centers have got certain load the supply from the first unit lay let's say is 100 and supply from the second center is say of say 200 so 200 units are supplied from here and 100 units are supplied from the supply center one all right so now uh, this is the distance let's in the same way find the distance from B to s2 okay from B to s2 and from B to s1 of course we are going to take the rectilinear uh, the rectilinear distance so it will be the motion in the vertical and the horizontal direction here also it will be in the vertical and the horizontal direction so we'll have B s1 as 6 minus 5 plus 6 minus 2 and that will be 1 plus 4 so it's 4 plus 1 which is 5 and similarly B s2 will be six minus three plus six minus five and that's going to be three plus one which is equal to four all right so now we have got all the four distances next we'll have to find the product of the distance into load so it is a s1 multiplied by the load one of one and then a s2 multiplied by the load of 2 okay a s1 is we see here is 3 3 times the load of s1 is 100 units so it will be 100 and a s2 uh, is here a s2 is 4 units times the load at 2 is of 200 units so the value here will be 3 into 100 is 300 and here is 4 into 2 is 8 so it's 800 here and then we'll find the sum of these 
so it will be 8 plus 3 1100 so the total value of the load distance of the load multiplied by distance for a right for the location a prospective location a is how much is 1100 so for this location it's 1100 the same way let's find for b b s 1 times the load of 1 b s 1 value is 5 and the load of 1 is 100 so it is 500 similarly b s 2 times the load of 2 b s 2 is 4 into the load here is 200 so it is 4 into 2 is 800 now when we measure these it's going to be 1300 zero. so the value here for b it is how much it's 1300 zero zero. so which of these two is better location obviously it is the a why because the sum of the product of the load and distance for a is minimum it's lesser than the value here therefore we will select the location a all right yeah so that is the way by which we do this all right so this is when we consider the rectilinear distance what about the center of gravity is a good starting point to evaluate locations in the target area using the load distance method the first step is to determine x and y coordinates of different locations either in the form of longitude and latitude locations or by creating an x and y grid this location generally is not optimal one for the distance measures, but it, is, it is still is an excellent starting point. The load distance course for location it is vicinity can be calculated until the solution is near optimal. The center of gravity is to define to be the location that minimizes the weighted distance between the warehouse and its supply and distribution points where the distance is weighted by the number of tones supplied or consumed. The first step in this procedure is to place the locations on a coordinate system. The origin of the coordinate system and scale use are arbitrary, just as long as the relative resistance are correctly represented. This can be easily done by placing a grid over an ordinary map. The center of gravity is determined by the formula. Where Cx equals x coordinate of the center of gravity, Cy equals y coordinate of the center of gravity, Dix equals x coordinate of location i, Diy equals y coordinate of location i. Using a break-even analysis, break-even analysis can help a manager compare location alternatives on the basis of quantitative factors that can be expressed in terms of total cost. It is particularly useful when the manager wants to define the range over which each alternative is best. What is meant by break-even analysis? Break-even analysis looks at the level of fixed cost relative to the profit earned by each additional unit produced and sold. In general, a company with lower fixed cost will have a lower break-even point of sale. The GIS method for locating multiple facilities. So the GIS tools can help you have a picture of your location and its information such as streets, buildings, vegetation, transportation structure of roads, and interstate highways. So these capabilities of the GIS allows analysts to quickly arrive at a reasonable solution to the multiple facility location problems. So here is a five-step framework that captures the use of GIS for locating multiple facilities. So for step one, uh, look for existing customers and facilities in the GIS and study their data. The second step is to visually split or to separate the entire operating area into a number of parts or subregions that is equal to the number of 
uh, facilities to be located. So, for example, if you're going to locate uh, five facilities, you're going to group the entire operating area into five parts or subregions. The third step is to assign a facility location. So, for each of the parts or the subregions that you have uh, separated or splitted, you will each assign uh, a facility location that is based on the visual density of customer concentration or other factors. So, for example, if one of the subregions are appropriate or has the factors or characteristics that would make it appropriate for it to be a distribution center facility, so you're going to assign that kind of facility in that subregion. Alternately, determine the center of gravity of for each subregion in identified in step 2 and it will be the starting location point of for the facility in that subregion. So the fourth step is to search for alternative sites. So you will look at the center of gravity and around that you will uh, search for alternative sites uh, in that subregion that can that has the 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 factors or the characteristics that make it a feasible location to meet the management's needs such as environmental issues, avail availability to major metro metropolitan areas, or proximity to highways. The fifth step is to compute the total load distance course, so which will uh, improve the customer service and uh, reduce the transportation costs and of course perform capacity checks so um, check on the capacity of your uh, facility locations if it has um, the required um, capabilities or factors that are necessary for it to be an effective location for your facility uh, you will do that before finalizing the locations for each region Transportation method. The transportation method for location problem is quantitative approach that can help solve multiple facility location problems. We use it here to determine the application pattern that minimizes the cost of shipping products from two or more plants or sources of supply to two or more warehouse or destinations. The transportation method, so a method na ito is quantitative approach. Pag sinabi sa quantitative approach, it is broad objective acceptable, wherein it helps to solve and determine the location pattern that minimizes the cost of shipping products from two or more plants, sources, warehouse, simply this method helps to describe a phenomenon across a larger number of participants, thereby providing the possibility of summarizing characteristics across relation or groups.